ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ ఓం నమో భగవతే వాసుదేవాయ శ్రీమద్ భగవద్గీత అజ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ అండ్ కామెంటరీ బై హిస్ డివైన్ గ్రేస్ శ్రీ ఏసి భక్తి వేదాంత స్వామి గోపాల్ చాప్టర్ టూ టెక్స్ ఫార్టీ ఫోర్ దోస్ ఆఫ్ యూ హో ద బర్స్ కంప్లీస్ చాంట్ ఆఫ్ మీ లైన్ బై లైన్ భోగైశ్వర్య ప్రసక్తాహృతచేత వ్యవసాయాత్మికా బుద్ధి సమాధో న విధీయతే ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ఇన్ ద మైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ దోస్ who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence and who are bewildered by such things the resolute determination of devotional service to the supreme lord does not take place for what samadhi means fixed mind the vedic dictionary the nirukti says samyag adhiyate smin hare krishna atma tatvo yat hamyam yat hamyam when the mind is fixed for understanding the self it is called samadhi samadhi is never possible for persons interested in material sense enjoyment nor for those who are bewildered by such temporary things they are more or less condemned by the process of material energy this is this verse comes in the second chapter of bhagavad gita which is where the lord begins his instruction to arjuna and from understanding this verse we can understand the difference between krishna consciousness and what shila prabhupad refers to as mundane religion the statement mundane religion may seem or the, or the phrase mundane religion may seem like an oxymoron which means a contradictory statement it's something like saying dry water it doesn't make sense does it so mundane religion how can religion be mundane because religion is meant for a higher purpose religion means to be in contact with god or there are some kinds of religion that are not very much god focused but at least the idea is there's something spiritual so mundane religion means mundane spiritual but spiritual means that which is above the mundane so what is prabhupada referring to by mundane religion what he is referring to is practically everything that goes on in the world in the name of religion as shila bhakti siddhant has said thako noted paraphrasing from the second chapter of shrimad from the second verse at the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam he said prithivite jato katha dharma naam chale bhagavata kahe ta ta pari purna chale which means that whatever is going on in the name of religion in the world is simply cheating spiritual when we say this word it's a, it's a common word just like people often say well, i'm i have spiritual interest or i'm interested in spiritualism we often hear that but their interest in spiritualism can often lead them to this puja room in here which if you go in here you'll find the purport of 
पृथ्वीते जत कथा धर्म नाम चले भगवत कहे परिपूर्ण चले परिपूर्ण कम्प्लीट चीटिंग बिगेस्ट चीटिंग नो वन लाइक्स अ चीट There are so many cheats. You can go on the internet and do a lottery, and then, well, you didn't win. Okay, I didn't win. But then you find out that no one won, except the person who was organizing the lottery, because they didn't allot any winners. They just uh, they gave the first prize to themselves, and the second prize, and the third prize, and all the prizes. So there are so many cases. You buy a car, used car. The person says, "Very good condition." You pay the money and you drive it home and the chassis burns. So you feel, ah, oh, I was cheated. So no one likes a cheat. But in the field of religion, people like to be cheated. Whereas in normally people don't like to be cheated, but in the field of religion, people willingly are cheated. Because actually, the whole material world is a place of cheating. We are cheating ourselves by presuming that we can be happy by bhog, material enjoyment, and aishvarya, amassing wealth. We presume we can be happy. Which is whether or not you mind me saying so. Probably why you're all here. You didn't come here because you like the climate better than India. But it's, of course, I'm not blaming you. But uh, it's an economic fact that Indians are coming here because they find that they can earn more money by doing the same work. And it's presumed that, or it's the mistake of modern, not only modern society, but throughout the ages, that by in, improving our economic condition, that means we'll have more bhoga and aishvarya, and that automatically we shall be more happy by doing so. It is the myth that is sustaining human society. Traditional Indian culture or Vedic culture accommodated that spirit. There was dharma, artha, kama, and moksha, and most people in this chatur varga, most people were interested in three varga, namely dharma, artha, and kama. Not many people were interested in moksha. Dharma. That's why this uh, Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thakur says, "Dharma nama chale." What is going in the name of dharma? What is going in the name of dharma is simply something that to improve our economic situation, so that we can enjoy pious sense gratification. <laughs> On the understanding that. Improved mater- material enjoyment ultimately comes from performing pious activities on the understanding that we get what we deserve according to our karmic activities, and that if we perform our duty according to the laws of shastra, that we will be rewarded with. Janma Ishvarya Shuta Shri, birth in a good family, so-called good family. Ishvarya means wealth, opulence. Janma Ishvarya Shuta, good intelligence, good learning, and Shri bodily beauty and bodily good health, which is health, bodily good health seems so difficult to achieve in the modern age. So many people are doing so many things. Me too. Exercises and uh, diet control and all this. Because what was normal previously that people would have 
fairly good health has become difficult to attain. So people presume that if you follow the prescriptions of Shastra, which means the, to follow Dharma, then you will be rewarded with Artha, money, and then you can have karma, pious sense enjoyment. And then uh, those who are more spiritually advanced them become interested in moksha, which is considered the last stage or the highest stage of the path of following sanatan dharma. That generally people perform dharma with the aim of getting artha. And when you have artha, then you can live comfortably and then you can have karma. You can fulfill your sensual desires. But it's considered that those who are the most advanced, then they can pursue dharma for the sake of moksha. Dharma sahi apabhargya sya. In Bhagavatam it said that dharma is meant for apabharga, for moksha. Another name for moksha is apabharga. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, ah, then what is that moksha? First we'll consider. Moksha means to be freed from the from Bhogaishvarya Prasakti. From the strong attachment for material sense enjoyment and wealth. So moksha that is conceived of by some as merging into the existence of the Supreme. Whereas the Vaishnava Acharyas, they say that moksha means to go to Vaikuntha. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he didn't accept. In the words of his principal biographer, Srila Krishna Kaviraj Goswami, when he's describing how dharma, this Srimad Bhagavatam rejects cheating religion from the beginning. Dharma projita kaitava atra. Herein, it's at the beginning of the book, just to tell it, just like you'll see on the book. He gives a little summary, what's it? Introduction, what's it all about? So Srimad Bhagavatam begins. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya glorifying Vasudev and in one verse summarizing who is this Vasudev? Janmadhyaya Sayataha These four words Janma Adi Janmadhyaya Sayataha This is It's a very very big topic It's the subject matter of all the Vedas so, uh, briefly describes Vasudev, and then next verse begins, Dharma Projita Kaitava Atra. Herein, in this Srimad Bhagavatam, all kinds of cheating religion are fully rejected. So, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami and his Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is the uh, means, it's, it's both the summit pinnacle of understanding Srimad Bhagavatam and the very means to fully understand Srimad Bhagavatam through the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, commenting on this, he says that Dharma Projita Kaitava Atra, cheating religion is rejected here. He says this means dharma artha kama moksha, which this chatur is the whole 
basis of what could be called traditional Hindu society. Of course, in modern tradition, in modern Hindu society, the basis is getting a degree and going to the Gulf or watching Bollywood movies and eating pizzas, things like this. But traditional Hindu society is based on Chatur Varga and that is glorified in the Vedas, Mahabharat, Ramayana. In Gita, which is part of Mahabharata, of course, Krishna, he, he says, Trigunya Vishayo Veda, this Trigunya Bhavarajana, that these Vedas, they're mostly concerned with the three modes of material nature, Sattva, Raja, Tam. So, rise above these modes, O Arjuna, Krishna he says, this Trigunya, be free of the three modes. So, to be three of the free of the three modes of material nature means to rise above them because there's nothing below them. So it means you have to go above them. There's nothing below tamagun. That means to come to the state of shuddha sattva. Sattvam vishuddham vasudeva shabdutam. To the state of vasudeva, understanding vasudeva. So anyway, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami discussing this. He says that dharma, artha, kama, moksha, they are all kinds of cheating. Although described in the Vedas. It's a shocking statement. But, actually that's true. The, the, Vedas, the Vedas, they're meant to bring us gradually to the real purpose of the Vedas. Vedasya sarvarahameva vedya. All the Vedas are meant for understanding Krishna. So, we may find that in other parts of the Vedas it recommends do this, do that, go to Swarga Loka, develop the Kundalini Shakti. So many things are there. But it's all meant to pull us gradually to Krishna. That should be distinguished from some of the things in that room there which have got nothing to do with anything in the Vedas. If the if the Vedic processes are considered inappropriate, then what to speak of dressing up some fisherwoman from Kerala as Durga or something like this. I mean, it's long, long way from anything actually religious. So, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, that is, in the words of Krishna so it means it's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself described that uh, Krishna Vishaya Prema Param Purusharta Jar Age Trinatula Chari Purusharta. He said that Prema, love based on Krishna, with the subject matter as Krishna, Krishna Vishaya Prema, Param Purusharta. It is the actual is the actual purusharta, paramartha, the, the actual necessity. Elsewhere Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes Prem Prayoja. Our real necessity is to develop love of Krishna. And he says, Jara Agi Chuna Tulla Chari Purusharta. In comparison with which it, this love of Krishna in comparison with which Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha are just like straw in the street. Insignificant. So, anyway, to get back to what is the description? That of all, the, this cheating religion, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that of all the types of cheating religion, it means Dharma, Arma, Katha, Kama, Moksha, Dharma de Mokavancha Koita Pradhan Jaha Hoite Krishna Bhakti Hoy Antardhan. He says that of the different kinds of cheating, the worst is the desire for liberation because that destroys the 
very feeling of bhakti, the possibility of bhakti. This is why we have to learn actually what is bhakti from bona fide acharyas. Because in India there is a great misconception as to what is bhakti. Which was promulgated by Sripad Shankara Acharya in, on the order of Narayana. Lord Shiva took the role of an Acharya to cheat the people. And he taught that bhakti is meant to lead to moksha in which one becomes the Supreme Brahman. Actually in Shankaracharya we don't, he doesn't speak of Supreme Brahman, he only speaks of Brahman. So he said bhakti leads to jnan and jnan leads to moksha and moksha means to become one with God. But bhakti means to, and the actual meaning of bhakti is to be, to understand that I am the eternal servant of Krishna. Bhakti means that one has selfless devotion to Krishna, understanding he is Prabhu, I am Das. But if we think I'll do bhakti and then later, now I'm doing puja, later on I'll jump up on the Krishna, I'll jump up on the altar, throw Krishna off and if he wants he can worship me. I shall become God. That's what they're thinking. And in Shankaracharya's teachings, you can worship Krishna, you can worship Durga, you can worship this one, that one, because bhakti is only a means. But the actual meaning of bhakti is bhakti that is jiva surupai krishna nitradas. That is the intrinsic characteristic of the jiva is to be the servant of Krishna. It is not a means to anything else. It is the very meaning of our existence. So, in the stage of sadhana, bhakti is a means. It is upai, but it is also upaya. It is the goal also. Therefore, in, in Shastra, it is stated that, uh, what is that? Bhakti is chain number. Bhaktya sujatya bhaktya. Bhakti comes from bhakti. Just like Prabhupada was asked, what does this chanting of Hare Krishna lead to? Prabhupada said, more chanting. <laughs> chanting is the means and the end. Now we are chanting. O oh Krishna, O oh energy of Krishna, please engage me in your service. And when actually engage, please engage me in more service. That is the meaning of chanting Hare Krishna. So there is a great uh, misunderstanding about what bhakti is. And many people presume themselves to be in bhakti without any proper understanding. And therefore people think that, well, you can worship any god. And it's all the same. And uh, previously we had 33 crores, but there's no harm in inventing a few more also. <laughs> have to be modern, keep up with the times. And why God is only coming in Mathura, why not in Kerala and Bangalore? And, and why not a few local gods also? So... These are some of the problems that arise. Therefore, we have to we have to learn. We have to be trained in what is bhakti. Actually, Rupa Goswami has given the actual definition of bhakti. Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana kama jnana vritam anukulyena krishna nushilanam bhakti rutama utama bhakti means that uttama which is tama means darkness. So that which is free from material illusion, bhakti, if it's executed for material gain, oh Krishna, I love you very much, give me a new car. <laughs> That's not bhakti. Or, 
Srinivas wine shops. 20% of the profit goes to Balaji. Balaji gives blessings and the money goes to him and the government takes it. And then the government ministers take the money and go to Srinivas wine shop and drink the wine and the money, the money goes round and round like this. Of course they don't go to the wine shop, they own the wine shop. But they... Anyway, this is all cheating religion. It's just some, just some different examples. Those of you who are from Andhra Pradesh, you can understand. Saptagiri hatcheries and all this kind of thing. Ugh. How they can do? How sinful. How sinful. They want to make the law of their partner in crime. He's the big dada. What rascals. They think it's being pious. So, anyabhilashita shunya, without any personal desire, and definitely jnana kamadhi not not this desire to, now I'll worship Krishna, later I will merge into the, I will become one. No, not that either. Anukul yena krishna Anukul, favorably performing devotional service according to the rules and regulations given by Rupa Goswami himself. He has collected them. He has given in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which Srila Prabhupada has very kindly translated as Nectar of Devotion. Who's read this book, Nectar of Devotion? Hands up, please. Hi. You didn't read? Never read. It's a very important book. You should all read. You want to be devotees? You have to read this book. Because it tells. This book, Rupa Goswami has kindly compiled, describes why bhakti is the only auspicious path, giving so many quotations from Shastra. What is the meaning of bhakti? How to execute it? What are the pitfalls in executing it? What is the result of executing it? What is the perfectional stage? So it's the, Prabhupada said this is the handbook of the Krishna consciousness movement. How we can all the whole gamut of bhakti, bhakti yoga. Prabhupada gave the subtitle, The Nature of Devotion, The Complete Science of Bhakti Yoga. So please read that book. Of course, you have to see how to get them here. You can also get it on the internet. There are different ways of doing it. So, uh, Rupa Goswami's definition of bhakti yoga is that which is free from any personal desire, but bhogaishvarya prasakta antaya parita chaita sam vivasayatmaka buddhi samadho naridhiyate We are attached since time immemorial to material enjoyment. So it's difficult to fix the mind even when we're trying to take to bhakti. Therefore, we have to follow the process given by Rupa Goswami. That means he's given, collecting from all shastras. What is the process of bhakti? Adho, shadha. In the beginning, one should have some faith. Tataha, sadhu, sangha. Then, one should associate, with faith, one should associate with devotees. Atha, bhajana, kriya. Then under the guidance of devotees, one should perform the activities of devotional service. This bhajan. What is this bhajan? How to do bhajan? Rupa Goswami has given 64 principles. Adogo, Rashaya, Krishna, Diksha, Nushikshanam, Vishram, Kina, Guru, Seva. Beginning with taking shelter of a spiritual master, taking initiation, shiksha, most important thing taking instruction, serving him. So like this, Rupa Goswami is given, what are the 64 basic principles of bhakti? As a result of following which there will be anartha nivriti. All the unwanted things in the heart will be cleansed away. Kama, Krod, Lord, Moha, Madhamat, sorry. This will be cleansed away. Then gradually one can advance. So this is the process. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has spoken to clarify 
What is our need? Our need is to perform devotional service to Krishna. That has been expounded more by Rupa Goswami, who is the principal emissary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for describing and defining his teachings. In academic circles, Gorya Vaishnavas are usually referred to as Chaitanyaites. But Gorya Vaishnavas themselves, they don't use this term. They either say Gorya or Rupanuga. Particularly, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasar Thakur used this term Rupanuga. Means follow of Rupa Goswami. Why Rupa Goswami? If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the prominent figure, then why Rupa Noga? Because Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Hyamdadati What Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had to teach, Rupa Goswami ascertained that. And on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's order, codified it, defined it, gave it, and gave it in literature. So therefore, the parampara importantly comes through Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. Also, Bhaktisthan Saraswati used to use this term, Rupa Anoga, to clarify the point that we have, to, real Gorya means Rupa Anoga, one who follows Rupa Goswami. Because there are so many who in the name of following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they're simply following their own mind and senses and remaining Bhogaishvarya Prasakta, attached to material enjoyment in the name of serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I request you to try to understand what are the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through the parampara coming down through Rupa Goswami, which very importantly has come in the modern world through Srila Prabhupada. So please try to understand very clearly. It may be, you see, that we often find, like Prabhupada said, that Prabhupada said, and we can see ourselves also, people in India, many, they have a natural aptitude for bhakti. That is, many people, not all, but many, have a natural aptitude. Just like at Saptagiri, Chirumala, we see so many people going out, going out, Govinda, 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 they're calling out. All day and night, people are there. And so many places, no, that's the most frequented temple, but there are so many temples. And by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, the bhakti cult is booming in India. Actually, that's a fact, it's by the grace of Prabhupada. Otherwise, when I first came to India in 1976, there wasn't that much interest, actually. But nowadays, uh, there's like Govardhan. There were you, a few people used to do Parikram. And now, you're, now they made a big road. There was no road around Govardhan. And that's... And during certain seasons of the year, that's completely packed. The whole 14 kilometers, you can hardly move. Whereas previously, there were just a few people coming. So that's just why it's... Uh, it's picked up because because of Prabhupada's powerful preaching. So many people in India are, are discovering that yes, we should take to bhakti. But one possible disadvantage of this natural inclination towards bhakti is to consider that, well, I already have bhakti. But the inclination towards bhakti doesn't mean that one is automatically perfect. Just like we find, this is a mundane example, but we find that people are born with different inclinations. Someone may be born with a 
then in, he has, if you look in the chart, you'll see, oh, this, this child has an inclination towards music. They have a natural aptitude for music. That doesn't mean that they don't need training. Still they need training. There, there are some exceptions. Mozart was making compositions by the age of five. So there may be some exceptions, but still you need training. Someone is born as a doctor's son. So then someone is coming in for heart surgery and they bring the doctor and say, well, what's your qualification? Well, I'm a doctor's son. So, you know, my, my father was a heart surgeon. What's your qualification? He has to be trained also. Simply to have an inclination is not enough. Just like we hear so many people say, Oh, my grandmother was a great devotee. She used to get up every morning and well, what about you, sir? <laughs> you have to do also. So there may be this tendency to think, Yes, yes, we are all devotees. Actually, one has to take training and understand. Otherwise, it may be that in the name of bhakti, we're being cheated by maya also. We just presume we know what is bhakti. But actually, this bhakti is science, the complete science of bhakti yoga, by which we become free from all material desires and fully surrender to Krishna. Now, it may be that we go to Vrindavan and we see someone living in a hut with just a loincloth, this coping kamandalu, and we think, oh, very renounced. But it may be that even though such a person has no bhog or aishvarya, no, not apparent, but maybe also. Because it may be that some people they enjoy the status of being praised as a virat sadhu. <laughs> Bhaktisiddhan Sarasar Thako he exposed that dushtamantumi kisha vaishnava Pratishta tare nir jana gare tava hare nama keval kaita. Then my dear mind, what kind of Vaishnava are you? For the sake of honor, you are going and living alone, but your, your so-called hare nama is only cheating. It's a very strong indictment. But he was seeing that unless there is actually a spirit of selfless service to Krishna, that apparent renunciation may not be renunciation at all. Prabhupada told us that is, uh, don't think you can sit at Radha Kun. This is the first time I came to India in 1976, Prabhupada. He said, if you sit at Radha Kun, you will simply think of women and money and eat and sleep and fall down. <laughs> he was saying to his Western disciples at that time. So, it's very important to understand all this. So many points. What is one's own adhika for bhakti? How, how much one is actually qualified. So many things have to be considered. So it's a great opportunity by the grace of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu which has come to us through Sri the Prabhupada to take to devotional service. We should take that very seriously so that we can avail of the teachings of the Shastras and 
all the acharyas and make straightforward progress on the path back home, back to Godhead, back to Krishna. So many things to be discussed, but not all at one time. I'll finish here. Hare Krishna, are there any questions, please? Any questions, comments, protests? <laughs> Anyone understood what I said? Anything, nothing. Means everyone completely accepts everything I said. Ah, yes, please. Few, few, few steps. True bhakti. Well, I gave the definition in that class, according to Rupa Goswami, in a nutshell. He summarized what is true bhakti. Can you remember what I said? I elaborated for maybe five minutes on this very subject. It's being servant of... I'll say the verse again. What is true bhakti? Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana kamadhyanabhitam anukulyena krishnanu shivanam bhakti rutana. Let's go through it word by word. Anyavilashita shunya. Anya means other. Abhilash means icha, desire. Abhilashita, the tendency to desire. So being freed from the tendency to all Anyavilashita shunya, being freed from the tendency from all other kinds of desires except to serve Krishna. Jnana karmadi means karma, jnana, yoga, siddhi, all these different kinds of desires. Anavritam, uncovered, not being covered. That means that bhakti should not be karma mishra, jnana mishra, yoga mishra. If we worship Krishna with bhakti, but we're praying like this, God, I love you very much, give me a new cup. That's, at best, we could call that karma mishra bhakti. Or jnana mishra bhakti. To perform bhakti, but to think that one can understand Krishna simply by some intellectual process. Even by studying Shastra. Putting more e- emphasis on the intellectual process rather than the surrendering process, sharanagati. So all these kind of desires, they cover bhakti, but bhakti should be uncovered, free from all such desires. Anukul yena krishna anushilanam. Krishna anushilanam means cultivation of Krishna consciousness. That means by following the Sadhana process, Vaidhi Bhakti Sadhana. Anukulena, in a manner that is favorable, in a manner that is pleasing to Krishna. Bhakti Ruttama, this is true bhakti or Uttama Bhakti. Another um, quotation. Bhakti means Sharanagati or the way of taking shelter of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami is also quoted from Shastra, Narada Pancharati, I believe. What is what does it mean to surrender to Krishna? What does it mean to take shelter of Krishna? So this is a very big topic, but he's summarized in six characteristics of Sharanagati, taking shelter of Krishna, or surrendering to Krishna. 
That is, Anukul Yasya Sankalpa, the firm determination to perform only activities which are favorable for cultivation of Krishna consciousness. And concomitantly, Pratikul Yasya Varjana, whatever is obstructive to the development of Krishna consciousness should be fully given up. Rakshisutiti Vishwaso, firm faith that Krishna will protect me. Gogdritvevaranam Tata, and to think that Krishna only is my maintainer. I don't have to go to this demigod, that demigod. Only Krishna. Hmm. Atmanik Shepa. To ded- dedicate ourselves, body, mind and words in the service of Krishna. Atmanik Shepa. Karpanya. Humility. To think, I am very poor and fallen. Sharavidha Sharanagati. These are the six symptoms of surrender. So these are all very wonderful things, isn't it? So you can, you'll find in Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that he states these seminal points, then he explains them all in details with examples of different devotees and how they've done this. It's very beautiful. So please, if you can get some of these books, it's very important for all the devotees. Nectar devotion. Hare Krishna. I have a question. Most of us in Doha, we have worship in Jagannath, Ganesh, and Bhagavad mm-hmm. So, I think that it's uh, in Kalagundara, about Subhadra's birth. It's not mentioned in Bhagavad in any way. Uh, Subhadra, we find in Bhagavatam, she's the daughter of Devaki. Also. Clear mention is not there. Uh, I found it. Someone asked me and I looked it up. If you want, I'll, you found that also? So I can't claim to be a, have more knowledge of Bhagavatam than Radha Govind Maharaj, but I did find that. And that's also confirmed by Happy Mother, Joking Mother. <laughs> you know, actually they must have seen your name, given that name. Now it's Vijay, but... The node is definitely a suitable name for you also. He's always happy and joking. It's a name for Krishna. So we should all be Bhakti Vinod, following the footsteps of Bhakti Vinod. Be happy in Krishna consciousness. But details are not given. You won't get, you see, often people ask so many questions with the, that all the details of everything won't be given. We already have so many bhakti, we have so many literatures. Then if you want to know, you know exactly what did Kartipya Arjuna look like, and then you explain, well, he looks like this, and he has a mole on his left chin, and what was the karmic reason that he had a mole on his left chin? And, and there's no end, you know. There's so... We have to, that, that's why uh, we have to take... What is the star? Parikshit Maharaj, he is described as star hungry, one who takes, he had only seven days to live, so he inquired from Shukadeva Goswami, he was, what if the, on the essential topic, what do we, re, what do I really need to know? There are so many things we may know, but what, what do we really essentially need to know? So on that platform, Shukadeva Goswami explained to Parikshit Maharaj, nothing peripheral. We find in other 
Quran as there are many peripheral topics, just like in, for instance, in Garuda Purana, you'll find so much description of gems and the different effects of different gems and different kinds of ghosts. How you can become a different kinds of ghosts? Don't become a ghost, Chan Hari Krishna. But how? And what are the descriptions? What do they look like? And what are their effects? But Bhagavatam simply states, you chant the name of the Lord and then all, all these ghosts will go. And the gems are not discussed because what do you need that for? Chanting Hare Krishna. So, so it concentrates on the essence. Hare Krishna. Anything else? I described it in these books. Jai Srila Prabhupada and my memories of Srila Prabhupada. If you want to answer that, answer is there. Yeah. Many people ask me how I met Prabhupada, so I put it in a book. <laughs> what did he say to me? All these different things. Single most Gita Sloka which is the most Well, I didn't know any Gita Shlokas when I first came. I learned in Hatu. So it was you see for most Indians what will happen is you'll you may have some interest, then you'll come to some satsang, then you'll hear some Gita Shlokas but for for to, people in the West it doesn't often happen like that. Because we don't, we never heard of Bhagavad Gita. Well, we heard of Bhagavad Gita, but we didn't know any shlokas. Actually, nowadays most Indians don't know any shlokas either. <laughs> <laughs> they know Sachin Tendulkar's batting average, <laughs> but they don't know any Gita shlokas. Your favorite. Hmm? Your favorite. My favorite. Well, I'm afraid of having anything favorite. I think I have to think what is. What Krishna wants for me, rather than what I want for Krishna. How I like to serve Krishna, rather we should think how Krishna wants me to serve him. Bhakti should be performed only for the pleasure of Krishna. Of course, we are also sub-enjoyers. We enjoy by serving Krishna. But if I think I shall enjoy, I shall I shall do this as I like, then that's not pure bhakti. But naturally there are different tastes in bhakti. There are so many different stories. I don't know, it's very difficult for me to think what is there's it's a great ocean, so which which is better? It's it's difficult to say. So many wonderful things. We have a vast ocean of of wonderful verses and his uh, Vaishnav Sangeet. So many wonderful things. It's too, too nice to say which is best. As Prabhupada said, it's like a sugar cube. You can lick it anywhere, everywhere it's sweet. <laughs> And even many verses in Bhagavatam, they may not seem sweet. They may seem very karva, or not, not very nice. And they are also, just like we have this Nunam Pramatah Kurate Vikarma Yadindriya Pritya Apinoti Nasadu Nasadu Yam Oh, now I'm forgetting. Apinoti Nasadu Yam Oh, my brain. I left it in Bahrain. <laughs> Brain Bahrain. Nasadu man ye yata atmano yam asana pikleshata asadeha. Rishabdev says that people are insane who perform sinful activities, which simply for the sake of the gratification of their senses, because it causes, it is not good because it causes them to take birth again and again 
and to suffer in various ways again and again. So generally people don't like to hear this kind of verse. They like to hear Krishna dancing with the gopis. But we probably need to hear this kind of verse more, considering our own position. What do you think? Vishamdev's instructions. How does that begin? Vishamdev. Nayang deho deha bhajam rilo ke kashtam kama nahate virbhujam yam tepo devyam putrika yena sadyam shudyad yasmad brahma sokyam tonantam. He said that having attained this human form of life, we should not endeavor for sense gratification which is available even to animals like hogs that eat stool. Rather, we should perform austerities that will purify us and lead us to the position of eternal, transcendental bliss. So most of the people don't like to hear this. They like to take a shortcut. We'll jump, take a, take a long pole vault into Ras Lila, but there's no Paul Vault. We have to go through the process. We have to give up sense gratification. Bhoga Ishvarya Prasaktam. We have to give up attachment to material sense gratification. Now, simultaneously, we develop taste for Krishna culture. It's not that we, we just try to get rid of material desires. Side by side, the two things go together. But we should understand that the intimate details of Krishna conscious are only available to those who are free from any desire except that to satisfy Krishna. Where's the uh, program tomorrow in your... Oh. Okay, I'd like to speak more about this tomorrow because there's one very important purport from Chaitanya Charitamrita where Prabhupada speaks about this based on the teachings of Narottam Dash Thakur. Yeah, so you're going to say something? I want to do this during the Rasa you're talking about Rasa. People are not aware of what age Rasa dance could be. People think that... Rasa dance, yes. And Krishna was just a young boy. He was seven, eight years old. But of course Krishna is at any age, Krishna is not seven or eight years old. Ajao Pisa Navya Yadna, Bhutana Mishra Pisa. He's always the Supreme Personality of God. But even from, if we want to accuse Krishna, then we should understand that even if you think he's a materialistic sense enjoyer, then where's the question of lust 